driven from lands farther north by more powerful dragons. A young white dragon named Cryosvane has descended upon the Sword Mountains, claiming the snow-capped range as its domain. Typical of its kind, Cryovane is dim-witted and cruel. The dragon patrols the skies around Icebire Peak, surveying its territory while hunting for food and easy treasure. With each passing day, the dragon's domain grows as it ranges farther across the land, preying on anything it can catch within its claws or freezing to death with its icy breath. Sightings of the dragon are becoming more common, as are its attacks. Welcome back to Dem DMs. My name is Fox Ghost. I'm Panda Ghost. And I'm Matt. And if you haven't figured it out already, we are reviewing Dragon of Ice Spire Peak. So if everyone's ready, let's slide on in. Since this is a review, there will be many spoilers for this campaign. If you're okay with that, stay tuned. If not, click off the video right now, and no harm, no foul. Let's start with the things we like, okay? Start with the yeah, things yeah, we like. Yeah, yeah. I'm okay yeah, with a, that. It'll be a shorter section. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Maybe. Well, I, I want to start off, uh, start from the top, right? Um, yeah, sure. I like what comes in the box. Um, one okay. of the biggest things is, is, um... This being the Essentials Kit. Yes, this people. being the Essentials Kit are these dice. These clear red dice. Um, as opposed to the blue ones that came with the starter set, which the starter set ones actually feel a little cheap. These, these red ones, they're, they have a little bit more heft to them. They don't feel as cheap. They're, they're nice dice. I actually use them quite a bit. Yeah. Um... And then on top of that, I mean, you get the, the books and whatever. That's standard fare. But then also, you have these cards, you know, so you have your quest cards. Yeah, I really like those cards. They're really cool. Um, the magic item cards, which there's a there's a hefty amount of magic items in this campaign. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, condition cards. And... Yeah, the, I, I find when playing in person, uh, remembering what conditions you have on you is, can be a challenge sometimes and i think those help solve that also it tells you what those conditions are it's like oh yeah i know i have poison but i don't remember what poison does off the top of my head right yeah, i mean it, it kind of goes without saying but this this uh essentials kit is essentially a uh kind of other option for your starter D, &D group right mm -hmm. another way to get into the game so it right. is nice to kind of have uh more tools for the DM to kind of hand out to the players and things like that. That's really neat. Or even um, for them to use themselves. Like, there's yeah. cards that dictate how combat goes, right? Yeah. Which, mm -hmm. you know, can be really helpful for a new DM, remembering, you know, the different actions that, that can take place during a round, as well as for the players, right? And also, the biggest the biggest tool that for helping the DM in here is they have an initiative tracker cards, um, initiatives one through nine. Sure. Yeah, I think what also is really uh, unique to the Essentials Kit that the Starters Kit doesn't have is uh, rules for character creation. Yes. So the Starter Kit comes with pre-made character sheets for your party, which some people like just kind of handing new players those sheets for them to kind of just know those few things. Mm -hmm. But this uh, kind of wide, the Essentials Kit kind of widens that out to allow players to choose the classes and races that they want to play with a smaller selection than what's normally in the player's handbook um which still allows them to have kind of a wider uh uh, uh spectrum when they do get to that player's handbook you know yep and i i will say the the last card that comes in here um that that i really like and ties into my next thing that i really like is these guys the sidekick cards um mm -hmm. and so that's another thing that the essentials kit introduced was the sidekick mechanic yeah um which which is basically for those who haven't done this and are looking to run this campaign it's basically a watered down player character that either a player or the dm can run yeah yeah and they do uh scale with the players albeit a little bit slower than the normal player characters mm -hmm. yep. um so it still keeps the focus on your main characters but kind of allows you to play with um you know a group that maybe you don't have the typical four players or maybe you only even have 
just one player. You know, this, right. yeah. this book allows you to kind of take this game and play whenever you have the urge. Yeah, you know, I don't think nice. I've ever seen a book before that actually had rules for playing with one player character. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just I, that right off the bat I was like, wow, this is pretty interesting. Yeah, now these these show up again in the Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, which is a mm -hmm. separate book um, that does, I think, expand a little bit more on the different options. Um, so, like, this is a good place to start, but if you, again, want to kind of widen out after that, there are ways to kind of keep using that mechanic um, mm -hmm. after this game. Yep. And then, there's yeah. a, oh, what was that, Fox? Uh, uh, there's a there's just a few minor things that I found in the book in... The, and towards the back, there is a map key of what different mm -hmm. icons on maps is, which for us as experienced players, we don't really need that. But if mm -hmm. the, since this is targeted for a new group, that's kind of important, actually. Like, it's, yeah. it's really subtle, but I thought it was a good addition. Yeah. I mean, something else that comes in the box that um, is, again, just a nice kind of uh, inclusion to have um the box comes with a qr code um that you as the dm or as the players whoever wishes to do so can scan and link it links to uh D, D beyond you number one get the adventure dragon by spire peak there um but you also get um the expanded adventures um which there are three of i believe it's storm lord's wrath sleeping dragon's wake and uh divine contention um, all kind of following along the kind of Storm Lord Talos um, and that kind of storyline further um, that's kind of originating in this book, but you can take it further to, I think it goes up to like level 11 or 12 or something like that um, at the higher ends, which is just, it's a nice inclusion to have because as we all know, <laughs> there's not many of instances of that uh, from WotC products where it kind of partners well with D&D Beyond. Um, generally, you're buying the book in the physical copy and on D D Beyond if that's something you want to do. So, yep, just nice. And I guess I think that covers mostly everything that comes in the box itself, right? Yeah, external um, to the adventure. Yes. Yeah. Um, but then getting into more mechanics, like we kind of touched on with the uh, uh, with the sidekicks. The um, the fact that the all most, if not all, of the adventures in this book scale with your party count right so like yeah it's like if you have one player run this number of monsters if you have a player and a sidekick run this number if you have three players two players four players i think most adventures only go up to five players I, i'm i'm not this one, sure on that there are some that just kind of generally say you know multiply by three that's the number right. of enemies Right there, I, um, I saw a small excerpt saying at the beginning it did say um, should be run with five or less players. Five or yeah. less, okay, yeah, because I remember the one adventure. Um, if I could remember which one it was, um, the sh uh, Shrine of Savras. Um, mm. That one, yeah, that one. Oh, that one actually scales differently. So aside from scaling off of players, it scales off of player level instead mm -hmm. which yeah. is really nice as well so you can visit that one anytime yeah um and it takes you you know well because there there are some so okay let's start with kind of the makeup of this adventure which i think yes for for me is kind of the weakest part of this adventure um is kind of how it's structured um mm -hmm. so the idea is that your players are either new to Fandolin or living in Fandolin or visiting whatever the case may be um, and they are performing jobs on a job board, um, which is, you know, something that happens at very low levels to get your players into it, but not to this extent. Pretty much the entire campaign is based off of this job board. Um, they yeah. do, you know, two or three jobs, uh, and then two or three more jobs are added, right? Um, and in between that, though, there are, you know, like the Shrine of Savras um, and a couple other small adventures, there are locations that are not you know, keyed to that job board that are more just kind of if your players stumble upon it, um, right. which is is something um, similar to what uh, Lost Minds of Fandelver in the starter set did, where it had kind of like external sites for your players to visit if you so chose. Um, usually more for a leveling 
uh, idea, you know, to get your players up to the level you want them to be if for whatever reason they're not uh, meeting that quota. Yep. But it just, with the way that the job board is kind of depicted, it doesn't really lend itself to a real cohesive story, yep. you know, just as written. Obviously, you can create that, um, you know, but it, it seems very scatterbrained where you're doing all these different things. And I understand the reason for it. They want to kind of show especially mm -hmm. new players, kind of the breadth of adventures that you can get into in D&D. &D. Um, but it just kind of seems all over the place and without real purpose to it. Yeah, and, um, and that kind of leads into one of my more bigger criticism is it's, well, two of them, is the fact that it's an open world campaign, kind of, and mm -hmm. this is geared towards first-time DMs, and that's kind of hard for first-time right. DMs to handle. Yeah. Um, and then second and is with the cohesiveness, right? A lot of the quests, A, don't intermingle at all, mm -hmm. right? And B, mm -hmm. they all have kind of wildly different themes. Like, like um, to name a few, like, you, you kind of have, like, your generic high fantasy ones, which, you know, fits for the Sword Coast, and those are going to mm -hmm. be, like, the first three quests... Um, yeah. But then, like, the second group of three quests, um, there's a logging camp, uh, a mine, oh, yeah. and a ranch. They feel like Wild West. Mm. Uh -huh. Like, even, sure. like, the, the art for uh, Don John Raskin, I think that his name is. Yeah, yeah, The yeah, one yeah. quest giver. Like, he's wearing a cowboy hat. Just like... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's... So, I, I kind of took the time and kind of put my good and bad list um for the ones that i would be like you know if if you're looking at their at these um you, it's kind of implied that you're probably going to run most of them if not all um mm -hmm. but there is the opportunity that if for whatever reason you don't like one of them you can switch them out from things from the uh lost minds of fandelver book again that's something you would have to look up or purchase um but it, the, all those at encounters are also based around the town of Phandalin, so it would be easy to kind of sub them out should you want to. Um, right. Or you can kind of just give a reason for the players to go to the extra locations that are in the book mm -hmm. um, and kind of go with that. Because a lot of, actually, a lot of the extra locations almost have more of a theme cohesiveness to yeah. them than, than do the, the regular ones. Um you know, uh, like you said, Butterskull Ranch, uh, it, it seems kind of weird. At one point, you're hunting for cows, um, you know, which is kind of strange. Um, and then the Mountain Toe, like you said, which is another one of those kind of like mid-level encounters. Uh, it's just kind of random, like, were rats. And to be honest with you, were rats at the level that these characters are supposed to be at that point seems kind of lame. Um, yeah, to me. Not, not to mention, like, like it's either it that that one is one of my biggest problems because it either just turns into this, you know, kiting slog fest of an encounter, mm -hmm. or you convince them to leave or convince Don John Raskin to to take them on as as his new employees or whatever, and yeah. you leave. Like it either takes yeah. really long or really short. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I think. Uh, for me, out of all of these, I really love the Nomen Guard uh, adventure, which is very early. Um, it's a little bit more kind of mystery as well as kind of like detectiving like what is going on at this location. Uh -huh. um, and then I really like the um, the Woodland Manse um, because yeah. a lot of the surrounding extra locations that are in this book tie very heavily to what's going on there. Um, to be honest with you, especially because the later adventures that are kind of extensions of this game um, all kind of deal around Talos, mm -hmm. which is what the Woodland Man deals with. It kind of seems like they really wanted to do a story about Talos, and then they were like, wait, Dungeons and Dragons, we have to have a dragon in here. <laughs> you know <laughs> right, what I mean? Right. And it's just kind of, it's it <laughs> seems kind of odd. Like, you could honestly make the Woodland Mance the major final fight pretty easily by maybe mm -hmm. bumping it up a little bit and getting rid of the dragon as like the main bad guy and just have him be like some random thing that happens. Yeah, well right? the Woodland Mance is 
for fifth or sixth level parties. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And and the dragon fight at the end is for sixth level parties. Yeah. Um, and I think I think that would lend itself better to if you were running those extended adventures as like a full campaign. I think you could easily do that. Um, and you could use some of these low level adventures as kind of a starting point for mm-hmm. that. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, just because the dragon is kind of the impetus for why all these things around Phandalin are going crazy. It doesn't mean that that has to be your bad guy. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? That can just right. be a, you know, a typical force of nature that's happening. That's kind of riling them up. It's the, the immediate cause, not necessarily the the main bad guy at that point then. Right. But again, that's kind of dependent on the DM. Correct. You know, finagling some things. And this is meant to be for a newer party, probably a new DM as well. Sure. Um, which is, is funny. It's because, like, all this whole... I, I feel like for a new player, this would be a pretty decent one to play in. But if you had a more experienced DM. Yeah. Like, I don't know, it just seems like that way to me. Like, if you had an experienced DM, I feel, and newer players, I could see this working out well. Yeah, kind but, of tame that sandbox nature. Right, right. And but I feel like still do that, new yeah. players and new DM, it's going to be interesting. Um, yeah. yeah, and then and then, kind of going off of what we were saying with the quests earlier, um, you know, it, it does... Uh, it, so, like, it tells... Yeah, like, if you have a new DM, it's just like, oh, yeah, here's what you do. Give, give them this this gold amount right and like most of the quests are like except for um except for the last the last quote-unquote quest board quest which is the dragon barrow Mm -hmm. um all the other ones give gold as a reward for the most part and it's just like cool you're getting gold but you can't spend it on anything. Fandolin's this poor town. It's just like, oh, let's go back to town to spend money. Oh, well, they don't have. I mean, realist. I mean, like a town like Fandolin is not gonna have like armor, like better armor than what sure. the party's already coming in with, right? Yeah, like healing potions. I think it's like yeah. I mean, what you're gonna be spending that gold on? Right, exactly. And then on top of that, and then like even if you do find something that that is useful to you, what's the chances of this shop person giving it to the player? Like they yeah. they they're dealing with a freaking dragon breathing on the doorstep, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I feel like a big problem of this adventure is they tried to justify it also being in Phandalin <laughs> like the starter yeah. set um and I feel like there would have been an easy way to make this an extent a s- extension of that game if you wanted it to but right now it almost seems like Phandalin is not as developed as it was in that game mm-hmm. um, there was a lot more going on in the town that was interesting um this is very much like you go to Phandalin to get paid and to sleep occasionally um and other than that you know it's go to the go to a location defeat the monsters come back to Phandalin. go to yeah. a location defeat the monsters come back to Phandalin. it's very repetitive yes it's very instances. repetitive and um, it also a lot of rewards benefit being a greedy like the whole the whole point yeah. of the campaign is to be these awesome heroic adventures but like if you don't be greedy then you don't get a lot of the rewards. So, like, the Butterskull Ranch, you yeah. can get a Mithril Chain shirt from that. But you kind of have to be, like, either sneak around and steal the guy's Mithril Chain shirt or, like, swindle it out of him for helping him. Yeah, I mean, I will say it's kind of in line with the original idea that Gary Gygax had for Dungeons & Dragons. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, um, I think for the most part, it just... There are... For some of these adventures, as good as they are, I feel like the overarching kind of story doesn't really fit with really any of them. Mm -hmm. Um, The best one is the one that you said at the end, the Dragon Barrow, because out of that one, I think you get a Dragon Slayer Longsword. Yes, you do. Um, um, And And also, there's 
a necklace of fireball in there. Yes, like, but it's oh. also a dungeon with traps as opposed to a dungeon with more monsters in it. Mm-hmm. Right? right? It kind of shows a, a difference even from the rest of the adventure, pretty much. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, again, there's good things and bad things about this one, but I just don't like how it's structured. I think they if if they could have thought of like a cohesive story for this, like a mm-hmm. story reason for this, I feel like I would have been more on board. Um, yeah, and it, it so, almost feels like they designed the Woodland Mance, uh, the Dragon Barrow quest, and the uh, Axeholm quest, as well mm-hmm. as the final dungeon. And they're like, oh, this is really cool. Like, you go to a town, you go clear out the Helm's Deep, Lord of the Rings reference there, um, yeah. and then you go deal with, you know, you go power up to go fight the dragon, then you go fight the dragon. Like, yeah. those three quests and then the dragon fight work great, but it kind of falls into that same, uh... Rigor yeah, yeah, song and dance that Wizards likes to do, where like, oh, you gotta have players start at first level, which, I mean, makes sense for this. For, yeah. Because it's supposed to be geared towards new players yeah i mean yeah except none of the for except none of the encounters on the board starting off can even be handled with first level characters right i did the calculations on all of those all the encounters they're all deadly <laughs> yeah well what, i'm not even kidding they're all yeah. deadly well so this takes me to another point right um in the book uh cryo is not stationary he yeah. travels with with different locations, and it, it's kind of random. It's implied that if you ever roll the same uh, location as where your parties are either going to or coming from, Cryovane attacks them, right? <laughs> um, Cryovane is a young adult dragon, or a young, bl- young white dragon. Young that white dragon. is incredibly deadly <laughs> at, DR, that, at those it's like levels. I DR6 or something like that. Yeah, I I have done it where I I was playing with one player and a sidekick, and they went out and literally in the first roll to see where Cryovane was, he was at that location. He came in and just murdered them. Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? In one, that's hit. about right. Yeah. Um. And now it does say like he only takes about ten damage before he leaves, but it's a dragon, right? He he's gonna use his breath when he first comes in. Yep. So. It, yeah. it it i would recommend if you want to use this table wait till like level three mm-hmm. <laughs> at the least yeah. where they can take take a hit you know what i mean um and maybe uh, also well, roll the recharge like like yeah. assume that before he rolls up on the players he's used his breath weapon so when he comes in roll the recharge die um yeah yeah i mean it's there's nothing worse than the first time your players fight a dragon, it utterly just wipes the party. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> you and, know what I mean? Yeah. And, I mean, as, as Fox said, the encounters for the first... The first okay. uh, set of uh, set of quests is ridiculous. Yeah, um, yeah they, okay. So, they, they I ran... find a manicore at, the fir- at first level. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's, they Imagine either find a manicore, three, a mimic, or okra jellies. Actually, there's two mimics in in the uh, known place. There's the uh, there's the one in the storeroom, right? Mm-hmm. And isn't there one that's mimicked as a rug or something? No, it I starts, think it's the same one. It's the same one. Uh, when oh, the, okay. When the when the gnome uh, yeah. king first encounters it, it's a rug, and then it turns into the. But with that, that is actually a fun adventure, because yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's no, the depi- gnome- it's it's depicted that the mimic does not do anything till the players find it. Right? right. So you have a chance of at least your players all being right next to it, ready to whack at it before it. Yes. And up. also the other, the other interesting thing about that quest is that in the adventure book, it actually says you can convince it to leave with like a CR. I forget what the CR is on the persuasion check for right. it to leave. Right. Yeah, DC, you can yeah. actually diplomacy your way out of that one. Yeah, yeah, which but, doesn't happen uh, a lot in this. In this, right. and it has it has the really cool wild magic table, um, which oh, yeah. uh, 
is fun and the the mushroom bread and and stuff that is just a it's a cool location i I almost want to take that out and use it in something else because it deserves better well (laughs) again me but if your players don't go to that one first if they go to the uh, of the other two yeah they're in deep trouble i mean i will just say this they're gonna go to the umbridge hill first it's the closest it has healing potions they're going there first by and large, they're not yeah. going to go to any of the other ones. Well, except so, for when I ran it, my group, oh, as Fox remembers, went to the as, to the dwarf, uh, the dwarf, dwarf excavation. Excavation, yeah. Which and, has two other slimes. Yeah, j- jellies. Jellies. Or, jellies. Sorry. Yeah, jellies. Yeah. Which dropped from the ceiling. Well, guess who they dropped on in my <laughs> in, when I ran it? The wizard. <laughs> guess who got one shot on a crit? The yeah, wizard. The wizard. Yeah, I mean, oh yeah. There's uh, yeah. ochre slime is a CR two creature alone, yeah. Yeah. and you get two of them if you have more than one player. Yeah. yeah. Well, when we even had if five. your players are, yeah, we had five level I, one players. I almost want to like give the advice that scrap ninety percent of this adventure, take yeah. out the tallow stuff, start at level three. And go through it with as a Talos adventure, and you can use the advanced stuff because the yeah. Talos stuff is really fun. You fight a lightning boar. It's yeah, great. I, love that thing. <laughs> I, I love saw that, that like thing. lightning boar. Yeah, I never got to this when I played in it. Yeah, oh, and you can yeah. go. You can go to the lighthouse on the beach side and get blessed by the storm god. It's fantastic. Um, <laughs> uh, it's almost. I don't know. It's a, it's a good adventure hiding in a really unneedlessly unneedless, complicated one. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> but but yeah. Uh, I well, think the other thing that I wanted to mention before we, we get off the good or bad stuff here, um, the uh, NPCs in this one, uh, obviously 90% of them are from The Lost Minds of Phandelver. That's where they were first written. Uh I like 90% of them. Um, what I really like is Falcon, who's just like, has like a hunting lodge in the middle of the woods. He, mm-hmm. He's a really cool NPC that you should definitely run as part of your wild manse, uh, woodland manse uh, adventure part of it. Um, Cause it's great. Uh, but I feel like, again, there's just nothing going on in the town of Phandalin. Yeah. You know what I mean? I yep. feel like if, if that is your home base, I want, there to be i mean stuff happening in the town yeah right maybe the um you know you attack the woodland manse and then the lightning boar comes to fandolin you know what i don't know (laughs) but like just like have more happen there because it seems like the it's inherent it's supposed to be important but there's really nothing important there after you're you found your job you know what i mean yeah and mm-hmm. also like it's it's supposed to have this feel of chaos right of everyone mm-hmm. panicking and trying to deal with like oh what to do the dragon's coming right yeah but like there, there's no sense of of that when you're in the town right like yeah almost like there needs to be like a random happenstance or you know some kind of table for that right well so that so Fandolin is on the table for the dragon's location um, I highly yeah. recommend if you roll on that table, it lands <laughs> on that space because yeah. it will, especially towards the end of the adventure, it'll show the story ramping up. Um, like maybe go there, have him kill like a couple of villagers and carry off their frozen corpses back to his lair. Right. Yep. That would be an instant like gut punch to the players, especially if you uh, hit the right NPCs. Um, <laughs> and uh you know spark the inspiration of okay now's the time right yeah, that, now, that would right, be now really and maybe go. and maybe that's then when you introduce like hey if you somehow your players get a way of learning about the dragon slayer sword mm-hmm. in uh was it called dragon's barrow or whatever dragon barrow yeah yeah um then that would direct them there and then they can go from there to defeat the dragon yep. like that's yeah. how you can tie those things together yeah but again it requires some foresight yeah. on the dm's part and if th- this is a new campaign or yeah. new, I, new players new dm 
Yeah, I think I think I mean we haven't seen the new starter set yet. Yeah. Um, actually, as of taping, it's coming out tomorrow. Um, hmm. uh, but uh, if the, if you want to play a good easy adventure for as a new DM, do the starter set. It's a lot more uh, streamlined and a lot easier for you to follow, while also giving you some things to play with. Should you want to experiment? Right, this one almost forces you to have to do that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I kind of, I agree with you, Fox. I think if this is a new group of characters, but a experienced DM who's getting them in, I think they can really make something out of this. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I've I've run this as is, uh, and I don't like it as a DM. <laughs> um, you know, and I've been DMing for fourteen years. Um, I don't, but I would I would change some things in here, um, and I feel like it could be a much better adventure. Um, oh, yeah, it's got great yeah. potential. Yeah, yeah, I think the next thing that I want to talk about with you guys is you know you you run this adventure either as is or you know with your own homebrew version of it. What's next? You know, do you start a whole new adventure? Do you continue on? There are options in the back of the book for continuing on to different adventures. Um, you know, obviously, as they have done this, you know, the D&D the, uh, Beyond adventures that kind of follow this story would be an easy transition. Yeah. I think you can maybe focus on it more a little bit earlier um, in, in Dragon of Ice Fire Peak, but it's it's there. Um, one of the other ones that I know a lot of people do are the Tiamat game. Mm -hmm. uh, they do that pretty early. I think if you were to do this, then you kind of want to focus more on the dragon. Um, there's also uh, another dragon in uh, Thunder Tree in the Lost Minds of Phandelver that you could kind of add into this book to kind of give the over prevalence of dragons kind of uh, a focal point in this adventure. Um, it would take a lot of work to kind of make that happen, but you could. Um, and then obviously anything, uh, any of the Waterdeep games, probably more so Waterdeep Dragon or the actually Dungeon of the Mad Mage would work really well with how scatterbrained this <laughs> book yeah, is. I, um, I think a friend of mine actually did that. Did this then dungeon, or maybe he did um, dra uh, Dragon Heist. Yeah, I, I mean remember. it's 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 hard he, to do. He tied it in with with some of the other uh, Sword Coast. Yeah, um, I I would one. I would say if you're gonna do one, I would say more so drag uh, Dungeon of the Mad Mage only because uh, you don't have to worry about leveling issues. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, and it kind of still does fit with that kind of like random mercenary adventure that this kind of story wants you to build upon, right? Um, so I don't know. You can also put it as a starter for your other games. I mean, these work really well as low level adventures, but um, uh, it's not my favorite. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Currently. personally, if I were to run this again, I would go and I would do what you said. You know, focus on the Talos stuff and then roll into the the D and D Beyond exclusive adventures from this. Afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Probably. I mean, there's there's definitely some stuff with the Talos thing that I'm. I'm still a little bit wary of. Um, I'm pretty sure early on they can meet one of the anchorites of Talos, and they have the ability to cast lightning bolt once a day, which <laughs> is 8d6. <laughs> so maybe wait yeah. on that one. <laughs> um, but other than that, uh, the, I, it's I feel like it's a much more solid storyline than mm -hmm. what what's presented what's as the main. Yeah. yeah. Um, but. I'm sure there are people out there that like this, uh, and you're probably valid for every reason that you like it. I just, you know, for me, it's just not my cup of tea. Yep. I like a more linear storyline, generally. Yeah, and I like, I, the thing is, I like more sandboxy stuff, but mm -hmm. this just feels too disjointed. Yeah, right. like it needs to have some kind of through line, and I feel right. like the dragon isn't really pulling it off, mm -mm. right? No. There might be a way to do this with some other you know, entity again, you know, if you do, if you kind of try to tie this into the Tiamat game, you could have the cult of the dragon, which is the main overarching force in that game, be what's kind of riling everybody up, you know, or whatever the case may be. Um, but yeah, I, I think, I think it's just as it is. It's not, it's, it's not sticking the landing for me. Yep. Agreed. Well, I think we covered mostly everything that we want to talk about, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. 
All right. Well, if you guys agree with us or don't agree with us, with us, leave a comment down below. Um, if you like this kind of content, be sure to uh, smite that like button. Um, if you want to see more content, be sure to subscribe and sneak attack that notification bell. Um, but until then, uh, join us next time as we slide into Dem DMs. Bye, guys. Bye. Peace.